Thank you, Thomas, Liz, and the entire organizing committee of EBPF Summit for inviting me to speak. Let me start off by introducing myself. My name is Purvi Desai. I'm Director of Engineering at Google Cloud Networking. And I'm very honored to have a chance to talk with you all. However, I'm even more honored to talk about today's topic. We have wonderful teams at Google who work in these areas of today's topic. And I've learned a lot from them while collaborating on products or even while preparing this talk. So I'm going to start off by thanking them for the insights that I'm going to share today. So I'm going to talk about eBPF and Cilium at Google. And I'll cover it in four parts. First, a brief overview of eBPF in Google. Second, I'll walk through the journey of Kubernetes networking at Google, leading to eBPF and Cilium adoption. Third, we'll cover learnings, challenges, and our vision. And at last, we'll end with some ask for this larger eBPF community. OK, so we love eBPF at Google, period. Let me explain how. We participate in community. Almost 25% of kernel reviewers and maintainers for eBPF core are Googlers. And that says it all. We have experts in Google specializing in BPPF cores, functionality, such as security, networking, resource control, and observability. We participate in committee. We have Googler who sits in the steering committee of eBPF. The responsibility of the steering committee is to make sure that the core of the eBPF is well maintained and to set the roadmap of eBPF development. We have massive and wide range of adoption. Google uses eBPF for a range of applications in production from networking, compute, telemetry, security, and more. In this summit itself, we have Googlers presenting on container-oriented observability. And in public domain, you will find talks on kernel runtime security auditing, on BBPF-based CPU scheduling, networking resource control, and so on. We have adoption at Google scale. So we have eBPF programs, which are installed on millions of machines. And almost all Google traffic is touched by an eBPF program in one form or the other. After migrating applications to eBPF, we have been observing improvements too. For example, one such improvement is around 50% reduction latency for a similar function implemented in a different manner. While we can talk about this at length, and we can invite those experts in Google to talk about them, for today, I'm going to dive into Google's Kubernetes engine's journey to eBPF. So Google open-sourced Kubernetes in 2014. And with open source and Google's Kubernetes engine becoming generally available in 2015. In early releases, the concept of services and cluster IP load balancing was introduced, which was eventually implemented with IP tables. Later on, network policy implementations were done through IP tables. Since then, Kubernetes made huge inroads. And at Google, we continued our contributions to open source and also continued to offer differentiated and fully managed GKE with deep integration in GCP. Then we launched our Anthos managed platforms which enables customers to run their applications anywhere, on GCP, in their data centers, or in other clouds. From networking, we needed tons of flexibility, features, telemetry, security, and we knew that IP tables had run its course. From the very early stage, we saw eBPF and Cilium's disruptive paradigm that exposes programmable hooks to the network stack inside the Linux kernel. So when the time came to decide on next data plane, after due diligence, we unsurprisingly chose eBPF and Cilium. So eBPF and Cilium because of three reasons. First, eBPF had all the functions that we needed of programmable hooks in kernel and ease of operations. Second, we had vast expertise in-house with eBPF and networking. And third, because of eBPF and Cilium's maturity, leadership, and active community we saw the potential of being able to contribute and extend it for our customers. We launched GKE Data Plane version two, 
based on psyllium EBPF in 2020. Since then, we have made this generally available acetaplane foundation for GKE, Anthos, and our newly announced platforms, Google Distributed Cloud Edge and Hosted. It is also now default on our innovative GKE autopilot offering. Since the first launch of Dataplane V2, we have been able to deliver multiple features on this platform and launch more platforms with the same consistency of feature set. So let's go over some of the benefits that we have seen through this Dataplane and our customers have seen through this Dataplane. One of the not so hidden superpowers of Kubernetes is its developer-first networking model. Dataplane V2 is an opinionated, fully managed Kubernetes compliant network stack, which is based on Cilium. So we have harnessed the power of eBPF and Cilium. Consistent experience. One of the most important benefits for users is the consistency of experience. And we have delivered the same features, functions for Anthos, GDC, and GKE, but without lowering the bar to the lowest common denominator. So we have leveraged the Kubernetes style extensibility and pl pluggability to take advantage of advanced features where they exist. This enables us to have deep integration with GCP for GKE and flexibility on Anthos and GDC. For example, on GCP, we have container native VPC, Kubernetes native load balancer integration, Kubernetes native telemetry. On Anthos and GDC, we have huge flexibility. Third benefit is customization. In order to meet customer needs, we have been able to quickly turn around with customized features or customization in data planes to introduce new adjacent features. This was possible due to eBPF and Cilium uh, stack. Few examples being insertion of Anthos network gateway, enabling BGP load balancer of flat IP on Anthos or network policy log annotations with Kubernetes and GCP on GKE and other platforms. Fourth benefit is the feature velocity. With eBPF and Cilium, we were able to add features at rapid pace for Anthos, GKE, and GDC. For example, egress NAT gateway, or redirect policy, Cilium scalability, IPv6 improvements, such as NDP. And now we are working on introducing multi-network in Kubernetes so that enterprise or network functions or telco workloads, which need multiple interfaces, can take advantage of Kubernetes abstractions. And we have continued our contribution with Cilium open source by upstreaming the listed work as we've added them for our offerings. Finally, the benefit is of ease of operations. We were able to provide fast updates with ease without needing kernel upgrades or sidecar upgrades. In summary, with Dataplane V2, we harnessed the power of eBPF and Cilium and Kubernetes. So Google has been committed to open source Kubernetes and now even to Cilium. We are quite happy and proud that Google was the first cloud to adopt Cilium and our strategy has been validated with tremendous customer feedback. So we have listened to our users very closely. Our users love opinionated and managed services. We have seen significant interest in migrating away from IP tables and harnessing more power towards flexibility, observability, security, and supportability. We are seeing solid adoption of this data plane with our fleet transitioning to this data plane very rapidly. However, we also have customers who want the freedom and the ability to pick and choose from an open source ecosystem and enable from the best of both worlds, which currently could be challenging without enough modularity in the underlying layers. So we see the need of power of end and not or. So we believe we can achieve this by bringing more modularity pluggability and composability to Cilium and Dataplane V2. And we will be investing in this area in the journey ahead. So in the journey ahead, we plan to continue and magnify our commitment to Cilium open source. 
We will be upstreaming new innovations required to support edge telco enterprise workloads. And also ensuring that there is a tight loop coordination between Cilium and Kubernetes. As for us, Kubernetes compliance is a key criteria. We have already started investing in enabling more modularity, pluggability, and composability to Cilium and Data Plane V2. Our North Star is that GKE is a dynamic and open ecosystem of innovative networking features. We are very excited about the journey ahead. And while this journey of dynamic ecosystem is very exciting, at the same time, it is challenging. There are places where even the underlying eBPF technology is not sufficiently there. So we thought it would be great to pose some of those asks to this larger eBPF community, which, by the way, includes us as well, and hence it applies to us as well. Here are a few things. One, concept of ownership of installed eBPF programs. It would be great to know which process has installed what. On the same line, ability to have eBPF program registry. Some way where we can obtain metadata about installed programs. Who installed it? What else have they installed it? What maps are relevant to this eBPF program? And so on. Continuation of that would be ability to put policy on programs. A way to classify or restrict what type of programs are allowed to be installed by particular processes or users. And finally, ability to chain multiple EBP, eBPF programs on the same hook. Now, while we would be looking forward to such enhancements, we are going to continue on our modularity journey through Cilium modularity. And in the end, let me summarize that we have healthy love for eBPF at Google, and it is seen from the Google scale adoption participation in committee community, and we have a great start of eBPF and Cilium in Google's Kubernetes engine with a rapidly increasing footprint. For this, a very big thank you to the larger eBPF and Cilium community for the, prog for the progress thus far. And we are very excited for what is to come in the future and our collaboration. Thank you.